We got even more amazing Uri Slavkovsky news, as if you're familiar with the graph comparing him to Rantanen, well boy, do we have a surprise, as he is shattering Miko Rantanen's D plus two stats, we gotta dive into that, plus David Reinbacher in his first two games with Laval is looking like, at some points, arguably the best defenseman on the ice with some amazing praise from some Habs analysts, plus we gotta make a note about Lane Hudson versus Jacob Fowler and one of the save of the year candidates in any level of hockey from our boy Fowler, so stick around for all all of that coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. The first thing we want to talk about is that Fowler versus Hudson Boston College versus Boston University game. And if you watched the video yesterday, well, you know we predicted Boston College and Jacob Fowler to come out with the win. And oh boy, did that ever happen? They won six to two. Now Lane Hudson did get an assist in the loss on Macklin Celebrini's third period goal. But it was Jacob Fowler as their coach, Greg Brown. So we did a decent job in the first period moving our feet. But in the second period, they made a great push and the game started to go sideways on us. But Fowler was there with some huge saves to keep us in the lead. Upping his save percentage to 925 this season. 29-5 and one record. And well, here's the save for all you fine people. I mean, what else can you say except absolutely stunning save? Fowler has that mentality. People were basically saying his level of calmness, his demeanor, everything like that just screams superstar. And I feel like every single day we watch him, we see something new. Jacob Fowler sounding like Mayor Quimby there. But just, you know, people are seeing these saves. And to be honest, they're thinking of Carey Price right away. They're thinking about La Coupe, you know, just because when you see this guy, like this guy's a winner, right? And it's amazing. He's playing an even harder league this year in the NCAA putting up better numbers than previous, right? So he's already had amazing stats. He's just padding even more. But again, you know, it's like when you look at this team in a couple of years when we're much more competitive, that lines up right when he comes in, you know, kind of rookie season. It's giving us 93 vibes a little bit. Like, could this guy be a Patrick Wah? Could this guy be a Carey Price type of player? Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of work to put in to get lot, there. Yeah. But... But he's doing what he needs to right now. And saves like that, we can't take those for granted. Like, that is absolutely electric. This guy is still going post to post. And what he's doing is he has so much poise. He has so much confidence in that. You know, a little bit of a, a thicker guy that he gives, like, his, his team that confidence, right, in front of him. They're playing. And that's why we predicted this. Just because Lane Hudson's amazing. But this guy is just an absolute game changer. The way that he could just really take over a game, as we saw in that save. Yeah, and like he has a lot of the characteristics of elite goalies, like you've said. Now, again, we got to make it clear that goalies are extremely uncertain, and even ones that look like superstars until they're 20 years old, some of them never even make it out of the AHL, right? Some, some of them will be career ECHL, AHL guys. You never know. There are first-round goalie draft picks who end up going to the ECHL and over to the Dell or over to the league after a couple of years. So we're well aware that could happen with Fowler. However... However, this level of stardom, this this aura he carries around with him is like, it, it, there's something special about this guy. And I know I'm sure a lot of teams say that about their own goalie prospects, but there's something about Fowler, man, like the confidence he exudes, the willingness to get better every single day, the time, like he puts his team on his back uh, so many nights. Now, Boston College, they also have a fantastic offense, obviously. Uh, it's, you know, hard to, hard to discredit their offense and say it's all Fowler, but at the same time, he is just so wonderfully good. And all we can say at this point is it's going to be amazing to follow his progression. But um, but yeah, Lane Hudson. So that's not it for his season. I believe there's still some some other stuff they can do to get into the tournament. As far as I'm aware, I'm not totally sure the NCAA schedule. But Jesse, his season's coming to an end. And my gosh, I mean, we saw him have that amazing goal in their game before heading to the finals. But uh, versus Jacob Fowler, he managed to put up an assist. Lane Hudson, I saw some people debating this. NHL versus AHL at the end of the season. I know it's kind of an unwritten rule that you just give them those few games in the NHL. I see a few people saying he's not ready. I, I are we confident enough to say now at this point of the season where Montreal is officially now in the bottom five of the standings that we'll see Lane at least get a couple games for the Habs before the, uh, before the end of this year? Oh, he is. He's definitely with Jeff Gordon. He was one of the few players he mentioned specifically as having those star kind of possibilities. Like, they know what kind of player that they have here. And again, us as fans, as media, we know too. And what's so nice about this is it's like, as Montreal Canadiens, they kind of had a bad rap for some bad drafting, post cock and Yemi, everything else. And it's like, now we're starting to see, okay, with Lane Hudson, Jacob Fowler, we're starting to see some really good drafting. Seems like we're really turning a page in our scouting, our analytics, just everything that all kind of coming together. For that reason, I think they're huge on Hudson. 
definitely going to start with the Montreal Canadiens. Super excited. The way I think of it is like, hey, if Jordan Harris did it, if Jaden Struble did it, if Sean Farrell did it, Lane Hudson can do it. Let's move on to the second part of the video. Um, yeah, I feel like some people forgot Sean Farrell did that too. I sort of certainly did. Um, but hey, David <laughs> Reinbacher continues. No, no slander to Sean Farrell. He is awesome. And I hope he has a great year next year in the AHL. But we got to talk a bit about Reinbacher. I know we've talked a lot about him, but uh, man, he was part of a huge win. Now the Rocket are playing again uh, the day that we record this video. So again, maybe over by the time you watch this. Apologies for that. It's hard to schedule these videos around the Habs and the Rocket. But is what it is. They are now in sole possession of fifth, well tied in points with Belleville, and Belleville does have the game in hand, so realistically, I guess it's not sole possession, and Belleville could easily jump them, but hey, they're in a playoff spot as of now, and David Reinbacher was a huge part of that. Of course, Brian Wild, um, he said they're all the Rocket with a second consecutive win. It was in regulation, which was huge too. Reinbacher is solidifying the right side. He looked good, steady, strong, smart. To be flown in, little practice, big games with high intensity, doing, well, damn good for a draft plus 1D. Right side D is a high value piece and hey another right side D uh, Logan Mayu played phenomenally but Jesse Reinbacher I mean I know he's not been perfect and no one expected him to be perfect but I feel like we we tried to make sure we had our tempered expectations just like hey, just in case like you don't you never know how these transitions are going to go well I mean as far as it, as it goes for a 19 year old coming from a Europe Pro League to immediately play in some of the most important games as the season for Laval I feel like this transition is going as smoothly as it possibly could and he legit looks like the kind of guy that you want to rely on on every single minute out there he's been really really good yeah we said that he hit the ground running that's exactly what he's done scoring an electric goal imagine he could provide that type of offense right in the in the nhl i mean that'd be amazing to see but he really cares even more than this beautiful goal david reinbacher cares more about winning right and he's already contributing that already jeff who is really noticing that he's a big guy out there not only is he big but he really knows how to use his stick to really kind of disturbed plays. He's already making his presence felt, doing all the good things we already came to expect. Amazing zone exits, which is mm -hmm. fundamental for a team to have success. I think a huge reason why Laval has went two and two since he's arrived, but then also showing some intangibles as well with that, that offense. So he's really bringing everything to the table. Make no mistake about it. He is off to an electric start with the Montreal Canadiens. So, and the Laval and Rocket. And the Laval Rocket, so, both. Yeah. Getting ahead of yourself, but that transitions well into my question. Now, the right side is something a lot of Habs fans have been itching to get a solution for over the past number of years. David Savard, well, he's awesome. I love him, right? He he does what he needs to do. He's a Quebec guy. He's a solid defense. He puts his body on the line, but he's not a number one defenseman. He's just not, not what he is at this point in his career. And you have other guys like Harris and Gooley playing the right side and Kovacevic still there. But you have younger guys like Baron, like Mayu, like Reinbacher, who you're itching to see play with Montreal. And when it comes to, to how Laval is doing now, well, Baron is still fine, but it looks like Mayu is arguably the best player on the ice or best right-handed defenseman on the ice in a lot of these games. Reinbacher has looked phenomenal so far, and you know he's just going to get better. If you had to think, like, of those three, Baron, Mayu, and Reinbacher, who do you think has the best chance at starting next year with Montreal? My answer for now is still Baron. Even though I think he slid down the depth chart, I just think that they want to work on Mayu's defense a bit more and just let Reinbacher ease into things, at least at the start of next year. But I think there's a lot of Habs fans, and maybe you, you as well, that, that might disagree with that sentiment. Three former first-round picks, you know? So like, some really good guys there. What they've shown is that they want to kind of give guys opportunity according to their age, right? Kind of how they did with Eneman. It's like everybody kind of gets their chance, but they really want to go once they really feel they're ready. But I feel like David Reinbacher might be an exception to that rule. Again, when you're drafted, you know, top 10, especially fifth overall pick, that carries a lot of clout. There's even a lot of guys that, you know, it's easy. Those like top five picks, there's a strong argument for them starting in the NHL right away. As we saw from last year, a lot of those guys did play a lot of minutes in the NHL. So I think for that reason, David Reinbacher is definitely going to be ready, but you don't want to just give up on Justin Barrett. He can have a lot to supply, so there might be a value in him kind of having there. But, I mean, they, in my mind, they have to do something off season because these are three guys that, in my mind, deserve a chance to play at the NHL and probably now can, right? It's just how patient do we want to be with that, you know, but at the same time, like, if these guys are showing they're ready to play at that level... I think you need to give them that opportunity. That's going to be very interesting. Well, let us know down below. Which one of those three guys do you think has the best chance? Because, hey, like you said, Jesse, there's, there's a lot of ways this could go. And I guess we won't know until the time comes. Final thing we got to talk about is something we do know, and it's the SLAF. It doesn't work when I just say it, but you can see it spelled out there unless you're listening on Spotify, S-L-A-P-H. 
go check us out on Spotify. Give us a five-star rating if you haven't done it. All these episodes are also over there for your listening pleasure. Let's talk about Uri Slavkovsky. Not that. That we already talked about. Uri Slavkovsky. Here we go. Are you familiar with this? Well, we've shown it before. It was Uri Slavkovsky versus Miko Rantanen in their draft plus two years. Slavkovsky, of course, him still being uh, in his 19-year-old season with Rantanen being in his 20-year-old season. And yes, you're seeing that, right? He passed Miko Rantanen a number of games ago, well before he started this recent six-game point streak. And yes, you're reading that right. In, I believe, five or six fewer games, he has already caught up to Miko Rantanen's draft plus two point totals, and he still has a bunch of games to go, and he is riding a hot streak, Jesse. This is something that a lot of Habs fans have been clinging to. We have, for sure, as well. Just because of Rantanen's size and his skill set and where he came from prior to playing in the NHL, there are a lot of similarities. Now, they're not the same player, but there are certainly a lot of similarities there and hey point production well at the very least this is an amazing sign to see this and I mean you never know Ranton really took that jump in his d plus three and you gotta think that with this kind of progression and with what we've seen from Slaff recently he might be next in line we said we would need to update the Slaff and it definitely has been as he's climbed up now six games here six less games to get the same amount of points that is significant yeah. you know again Staff is just on a burner right now. Another point streak. He just gets on these streaks, right? Like, you know, maybe he misses one game. He doesn't get a point. Get back on another seven, eight point game streak. Yeah. The consistency that we're seeing from him before, like, we're starting to wonder, like, okay, could he be as good as Brandon? No, no way. No way he could be as good as Nico Brandon. Now we're thinking, okay, could he now even be better than <laughs> Brandon? In? I'm going to throw out another, another Colorado Avalanche name, former player, Peter Forsberg. Could we have a Peter Forsberg? Type of player, big body in slaff. You know, like, I know that's a high cop. You it know, is. Stanley Cup champ. But, I mean, like, slaff, like, consider, like, the points. But then also what he's doing, just the physicality. Winning those puck battles, like, again, like, we've been hyping him so much. And this is just so validating, Josh. Just to see, there was a reason why. There's a reason why we believe him. There was a reason why there was such big buzz. You only get that if there's a player that there's truly something special there. Not so many people are all going to be feeling the same way unless there is truly something there and we're truly seeing that happen right now. You know, I I'm going to say that he's not the next Miko Rantanen. He's not the next Peter Forsberg. He's the first Uri Slavkovsky. He is going to <laughs> define his own player, right? Like, he what he's doing now is crazy. Like, we saw he was third amongst teenagers in block shots behind only defensemen. He was first in hits by a mile, second in points to only Connor Bedard. Now, I don't know what his ceiling is. I mean, like, is it still realistically something around a 70, 80 point power forward? Yeah, I mean, like, that's probably the realistic case. But what we're seeing is trends from him that are showing that he could be way better than than a lot of those projections. And if we stay down to earth, I mean, like, and, and we just say, what is the odds on likelihood that, what will Slap be? Well, okay, yeah, maybe a 60, 70, 80 point power, power forward who's very solid and plays winning hockey. Okay, but you start looking outside that first standard deviation and you see these comparisons to like, oh my gosh, he's already better than Rant in point production. And he's quite solid defensively too. And well, we've seen his silky hands. It's just a matter of maybe getting getting that straight line, that quickness in his skating burst, and you never know what he could turn into. So we're going to monitor his monitor his development. We're going to monitor this slap, and I'm sure this slap is going to go into next season as that was Rantanen's big breakout year. So hopefully Slavkovsky will follow a similar trend line. But for now, that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you really enjoy daily Habs news, rumors, reports, everything like that, this is the spot to be. I've been your host, Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.